How do you know the difference between being in a trauma bond as opposed to being in healthy love? Can the two be the same thing? Is there a scale of where it's healthy enough even though you aren't sure? Today I'm going to show you how to know the difference for certain with every cell of your body so you can make the right decision about your relationship and prioritize yourself and your needs. Like my client Kate who was married to the father of her children for years, she came to me struggling to make the right decision about the relationship for herself and her children. After realizing that she was in a trauma bond and she learned how to heal the attachment trauma that was keeping her stuck in this cycle, she was able to break free and is now traveling the world, putting herself first along with her children. Now, this is the work that I teach my clients in Heal Your Heart School. So if you'd like to learn how to break out of these deep patterns, reach out to me to book a free consultation call with me in the calendar link below. Now, the reason it's hard to discern whether you're in a trauma bond or it's a healthy relationship is because both of these relationships actually start off really similarly. You feel in love with this person, they're showing you their best self and you form a bond with them over time, but it often takes months for unhealthy dynamics to appear. And by that time, you are well and truly connected to this person. A trauma bond can appear in the aftermath of what seems to be a very beautiful and romantic courting period because what forms a trauma bond with someone else are unconscious dynamics that are hidden underneath the surface of your awareness. So what are those unconscious dynamics? To be clear, a trauma bond is not a bond you've formed with someone through trauma you've experienced together. It's trauma you've experienced in past relationships as far back as childhood that informs how you attach to someone, which becomes comes the default way you attach in romantic relationships. So for example, if you had a parent who was always absent, like a father who would sometimes be around and loving, but often emotionally distant or absent or even volatile at times, you would have learned that love is scarce and unreliable and that you need to do whatever it takes to make men happy in order to get love from them. Your body will even be wired to seek out inconsistent and emotionally unavailable partners because that is the the only form of love that you know. So healthy, available and consistent partners don't even register on your radar or they seem really boring because your body simply isn't used to that. So you're now carrying around an attachment filter that feels like normal love to you, but is actually the construct of many minor and possibly some major attachment trauma experiences that mean you're actually trauma bonding to this person and it's not real love. So it's easy to get muddled and confused in discerning the difference between what is a trauma bond and what is healthy because you've probably never experienced a healthy secure bond before and you don't have a reference point to know the difference and contrast between the two but if you've had some level of trauma in your earliest childhood relationships for example a parent might have been an alcoholic or there was emotional or physical abuse or even if you had a loving family but there was just emotional absence or a level of neglect and you were just kind of left on your own to figure your emotions out, you're more at risk of forming a trauma bond with someone who can't meet your needs and is them themselves emotionally absent, neglectful, or even abusive. Now, before I show you how to tell the difference, I need to speak to the elephant in the room. Hasn't everyone experienced some level of trauma or other that affects their relationships and well, personality? I agree with the statement. Trauma is a spectrum. And of course, our earliest relationship experiences form the blueprint for how we interact in relationships as adults. So therefore, can someone who has had trauma experience true healthy love? Of course they can. You can love a characteristic about someone or the way they say or do things that may replicate a childhood relationship that featured some attachment trauma. Just because the two intertwine doesn't mean you aren't experiencing healthy love. But although a trauma bond and healthy love may come from the same origin within you from your earliest relationships, they aren't the same experience. The kind of love you are experiencing in a trauma bond comes from a self-referenced place, almost like the love that you're experiencing is the projection of what you've made in your mind of them rather than seeing them for who they truly are, where they're quite separate and apart from yourself and your baggage and loving them just as they actually are. There are are certain characteristics that differentiate a trauma bond from regular healthy love and I'm going to unpack them in detail but to begin with in general a trauma bond feels inconsistent uncertain and extreme you may have a narrative that the connection is magical unlike anything you've ever experienced before and it goes hand in hand with 
equally devastating lows where that person rejects you or is emotionally unavailable or even causes you verbal or physical harm. It's like the love bubble that you formed as a couple can pop at any minute and you've got to walk on eggshells so you don't burst the bubble. As opposed to healthy genuine love between two people which is built through consistency of their actions and presence and yours, their availability to connect with you and your availability to connect with them so that you form a bond over time where you feel safe emotionally to open up bit by bit because they are receptive to getting to know you and you can build trust because of that. Your points of differences are a positive thing in the relationship and you respect each other's differences and it adds to the relationship. This kind of bond over time forms a safe bubble that feels secure where you can really rest in it and you know that any conflict or issue that comes up won't burst the bubble because you know you will work through it together as a team. So let's look at four different aspects of a relationship that you can use as an indicator to uncover whether what you're experiencing is a trauma bond or real love. The first aspect is the foundation of the relationship. Although both types of relationships start similarly, their foundation, which is what the relationship is built on, looks very different. And more importantly, it feels very differently in the body. When you're in a trauma bond, you're experiencing two very distinct dynamics. One is a loving, romantic, amazing dynamic, and the other one is conflict-ridden and toxic. So trauma bonds often start with love bombing, which are over-the-top romantic connections early on. There is a quick progression to the relationship where you fall very quickly for each other and then there is the first conflict or rupture and there is no recovery from that first rupture. There might be some kind of recovery but the relationship is never the same again. And you start to notice in the other person and in kind of the relationship personality too, there's two sides. There's one loving aspect to it and one completely different aspect where there might be manipulation or lying or cheating going on. You feel insecure because there's no healthy foundation in the relationship and issues might be discussed, but they're just not resolved and behaviors never change. The relationship feels like you're walking on rocky, unpredictable ground. It's confusing and disorienting. As opposed to healthy love, which is built over time, time being the key factor here where you can build mutual trust and respect. Now, trust is earned through consistent actions, especially in difficult times, and respect comes from deeply knowing and valuing each other. You can express all parts of yourself and feel truly safe in the relationship because that person is just open to hearing you. And the foundation is solid, like beautiful green grass, not rocky, uneven terrain. Now, the second aspect that we can look at is your emotional experience, which is how you experience day to day the emotions in the relationship that you're having. Now, the emotions you'll experience in a trauma bond differ significantly from healthy love. And in fact, it may take up most of your energy and attention because a trauma bond is so chaotic. You're going to be kind of swept up in these emotions all the time, whereas healthy love just sits in the background, bubbling away most of the time, unless some energy is required to bring forward to resolve a conflict or a situation or a shift in the dynamic. So in a trauma bond, your emotions are extremely overwhelming. They're chaotic. You might be feeling needy, like you're riding a roller coaster of high highs and low lows, and you become addicted to these good times, particularly from the honeymoon period. And you're always chasing that initial connection. You constantly feel like you're not enough. You're always trying to improve the relationship by being better, by changing your behavior, by not being yourself and you're literally riding a roller coaster of high highs and low lows and you're actually addicted to the ride whether you're aware of it or not. Now, in healthy love, over time, emotions feel reliable and predictable. Yes, you have that initial spark, that chemistry sometimes, sometimes the chemistry comes in slowly, but over time, the emotions even out where it feels really safe, reliable and predictable. And this brings a sense of peace and balance if you've healed your attachment wounds. If you haven't healed your attachment wounds, it's going to start feeling boring and you might be rejecting healthy love at this point. So it's important to know that the relationship may feel boring compared to to the chaos of a trauma bond, but this stability is a sign of emotional health. You feel safe to express all your emotions without fear of manipulation, judgment, or abandonment. 
The third aspect that we're going to look at is conflict. How conflict is handled is probably the main indicator of whether you're in a trauma bond or not. Because when you've subconsciously connected to someone through a maladaptive attachment blueprint, your higher order cognitive functions are offline and you tend to regress into a more primitive young version of yourself that isn't at all capable of handling conflict well. So in a trauma bond, you might notice that conflict is unresolved, it builds up and it leads to either emotional suppression or complete explosion, right? You feel like you've got a handle on everything, you're kind of pushing it all in, but then one day you just can't take it anymore and it explodes out because you haven't been dealing with what's been building up over time. There might be gaslighting going on, stonewalling and superficial apologies coming from the other person or even from yourself and issues really keep piling up with no real resolution because there isn't any conflict resolution skills inherently in a relationship that is built on rocky ground as opposed to healthy love where conflict is seen and experienced as a growth opportunity right you have conflict and you actually feel like you grow and get closer after it most of the time because both partners are working towards a resolution like team members and open communication is what facilitates this. This is key, including asking for time to cool down before returning to the discussion. So you have that mature outlook to know that you need to remove yourself so that you can downregulate your nervous system so that you can come back to the conversation and resolve the conflict in a mature way. So there's empathy, there's compromise and mutual understanding or an attempt at mutual understanding are present and partners make adjustments to improve emotional safety and trust. The fourth aspect, and this is an aspect that's not talked about a lot, which is individuality and sense of self. Because in a trauma bond, you, when you regress into a younger, more insecure version of yourself, where you're acting out old wounds, you actually also regress into a more dependent part of you as well, where you depend on your partner for the validation and security and maybe even financial support and just that feeling of, I need to feel loved in this moment. Now, there's nothing wrong with needing to feel loved but in a trauma bond, it's quite heightened because the relationship itself is extremely rocky. So you're not naturally feeling loved and supported uh, in a trauma bond because it's not a part of the foundation of the relationship. And so you notice that you are over time becoming more dependent on your partner for those kinds of things. And there is a loss of individuality where you feel apart from that person because you've become enmeshed and reliant on your partner over this period. And the relationship may involve some kind of coercive control, right? Where you might be being isolated from your family and your friends a little bit more. So you're naturally needing even more and more from that person. But what's actually going on is control as opposed to healthy love where there's a clear delineation between me and we both partners maintain their individuality as well as their sense of identity as a person in a couple right you're actually orbiting around each other you're choosing to be together daily out of love not out of dependency and both partners bring their own energy and material and experiences and stories into the relationship without insecurity it's a healthy injection of the outside world and each partner takes responsibility for their emotions and contributions to the relationship so there's just some pointers on how to know the difference between a trauma bond and what is healthy love and you might have experienced there is a combination of both what feels like a trauma bond but what is healthy love I want you to pay attention to what is the state of the relationship most of the time right more than 50% is it one way or the other that is the line that you need to learn whether the relationship is crossing into trauma bond territory or whether it is healthy love and just know and remember you are worthy of healthy love your attachment wounds might be telling you that you need to stay with this person that they're the only one that's ever going to love you but just know that that is coming from an attachment trauma within you that can be healed and if this is something that you want help with this is the work that I do with my clients inside heal your heart school so if you're interested to know more about how I can help you heal those patterns so that you can feel secure and solid in yourself I really encourage you to book a free consultation call with me in the calendar below in the meantime here are some next step videos for you to watch so that you can move one step closer to feeling happy safe and secure on your own and attracting a healthy relationship if that's your desire and for now i'll see you in the next video